The human integument it consists of an epidermis composed of epithelia, a deeper dermis composed of connective tissue, and a variety of accessory structures, such as a variety of glands of epithelial origin. Some of these features evolved early in the history of vertebrates, as is evident in these microscopic images of frog skin, which also is composed of an epidermis composed of epithelia and a deeper dermis composed of connective tissue and is associated with a variety of glands of epithelial origin. This human epithelia from the oral cavity is classified as stratified squamous epithelia. It is stratified, meaning that there are many layers, and the apical cells, the cells which face the lumen of the oral cavity, are squamous. And so although the basal cells have a different shape, being more cuboidal, the tissue is named for the apical cells stratified squamous epithelia. The epidermis of frogs is also composed of stratified squamous epithelia. Stratified because there are many layers of cells and stratified squamous epithelia because the apical cells are squamous, they are flattened. While many stratified squamous epithelia in humans are non-keratinized, such as that of the oral cavity, that covering the skin and the epidermis is a keratinized stratified squamous epithelia. The cells die and become dead interlocked bags of the protein keratin. Keratin is largely water resistant, and so this forms a protective water resistant layer. In frogs, however, while there is keratin in the epidermis, the uh, superficial layers are not keratinized. The cells are living. And this is important uh, because frogs must breathe through uh, their skin to varying degrees. So they rely on gas exchange and their skin must remain moist. 